Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Little Tica and Baby Eats. As always, I'll be your host, Ari. And on tonight's family dinner menu, not so much a family dinner menu actually, it is date night. So of course, we're all busy and sometimes date night can't be on a Friday. So it is today. So what we will be making are some delicious New York strip steaks. I love this brand. Um, they're grass fed and finished from ShopRite, super tasty. Plus some French green beans, as well as some scalloped cheesy potatoes. So let's come along. So first and foremost, we are going to start with our two super easy sides, but they're super tasty. Now I wanna note that I was going for asparagus, which is what we usually use, but mm, they didn't have anything that looked too good. So I switched over to the French beans. Now. We do have two pans and one pot. This pot is full of water. And we're gonna use this for a scalloped potatoes because you guys know that I like to expedite and facilitate everything. So with that being said, we're just going to light the flame to a high flame for the water so we can bring it to a boil. Beautiful. So next, we are going to be using our oven, so we are going to be heating it up to 350 degrees in the next couple of minutes. But first, we're gonna work with our potatoes. And just put these to the side because we're gonna get to those shortly. Now, I do have three very big potatoes and I'm trying to make this portion. So I may not be using all three, but we're gonna see, cause who doesn't love potatoes, right? So, we're gonna go ahead, make sure that they're washed and that you've uh, cut off any parts that you don't like. But what we're gonna do is slice it and we're trying to cut about half inch pieces at this point because I don't want them to fall apart. So, let me show you. Half inch pieces, guys. And we're going to repeat this step for all our potatoes until we're done. All right, we'll be back for that. All right, guys. So I have sliced two and a half of my potatoes. And this reminds me of another way I like to make my potatoes when we're going on a lighter side. But I'll show you guys that another time. So for now, let's check our water and it's beginning to come to a boil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna toss these in there and we're going to let the water come back to a boil. We definitely have to babysit these because we don't want them falling apart, okay? So we might want them, once the water has come to a boil, we might want them cooking only about, I'm gonna say a fair four to five minutes max, okay? But let's go ahead and turn on our oven to 350 degrees because that's gonna be the next part for our potatoes. Beautiful. So, very carefully, bring your slices. They're beautiful. They're perfect sizes. And just go ahead and place them right into our pot. Now, you wanna kinda of layer them so that they're not standing up, so that they all fit. So just go ahead. And they're perfect slices. Pick some good potatoes this time, guys. Considering I previously messed up on my grocery list, this is working so far. Now, I do not want leftovers, so I might leave out some potatoes because this is feeling like a lot of potato. All right, maybe they all fit. Oh, perfect guys. Let's just leave that end on the outs. There you go. So let's keep track of our water. We are going to, as always, use our trusty wooden spoon so the water doesn't overflow. So we're gonna put that right across, but I can see that the water's starting to boil. As soon as we see it boiling, Press those four to five minutes, okay? And if you wanna start with four minutes and come back and check it just in case, let's do that, all right? Now, 
I mentioned I wanted asparagus but couldn't find it. And I ended up getting French beans, okay? These are already washed and trimmed. And it happens to be that it's quite easy to just start getting them prepared in order to uh, follow up with the next steps. So I'm going to follow the instructions on this. I don't love microwaving food, but again, we always expedite things, guys. So what we're going to do is we're gonna cut, cut off a corner of our bag, okay? There you go, so it breathes a little bit. And it says to simply place in the middle of our plate and microwave for two and a half to three minutes. Now, I find that my microwave is pretty strong, so I'm just gonna start with the two and a half minutes, okay? So, let's just still put them on a plate in case. Let's not have any accidents here. All right, guys, and when our timer is up on our microwave, we should be able to come back and check it out. Now, keep an eye on those potatoes, all right? Let's not ruin them. I'll be back. Okay, guys, two and a half minutes have gone by. So, let me pull it out and see how it looks. I've never made uh, French beans this way, so I'm a little curious. Well, oh, let's lift that. Oh, you know what? The plate's not too hot. Oh, they do feel nice and soft, but mm, feels like they could use those last 30 seconds. So let's go ahead and put those in. And now, guys, our potatoes have been cooking for about two and a half minutes. So let's just double check those. I can see that they're still quite hard, so they could still use a little bit but I can see through some. So just give that a, a good stir so we can like move the potatoes around, the slices, and make sure everything's cooking evenly. It's okay if some fall apart. I mean, it's still gonna go in the oven. It's gonna taste delicious. There's our timer. Let's see. Ooh, lots of steam coming out. And let's pull out one, right? Pretty hot. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put these to the side and let them continue to cook with that steam and that heat and then we'll work with them, okay? Now, another good stir for these potatoes. All right. Let's go ahead and set our timer for maybe another two minutes max. And we'll come back to check on those potatoes. Okay, we have about 11 seconds left for those potatoes, so just make sure you have a nice strainer ready, okay? And we're going to very carefully get rid of all that water. There's our timer. So let's turn off that flame. And like I said, very carefully go ahead and drain that water. Ooh, don't burn yourselves. Oh, so steamy already. And we'll just put that right back there so it can cool down, okay? Ooh, they look beautiful. All right, guys, let those cool down, and then we're going to come back for the next couple steps. We're going to speed it up now. All right, guys, our potatoes are still cooling down. But now, remember we have our small pan Usually I do make my potatoes a little more simple, but this time I wanted to add a little extra cheesiness, right? So actually, we're gonna light up this flame. To, I'm gonna say a medium flame. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our favorite milk. Ooh, crack that open. It's a little hard to open sometimes. There you go. I don't have the strength like that. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and pour one cup of milk into our pan. This is how we're going to make that cheesy, very easy sauce, okay? Let me just add a little more because I did not top it off. There we go. 
go. Let's seal this. Let's not spill some milk. And we'll wipe that down. Now, we're going to go ahead and place this over that flame. And we're going to let it come to a boil. So set a timer for about two to three minutes, okay? Let's sprinkle in a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And a little paprika. Now, if you like a little extra flavor, even though we are going to be using shredded cheddar cheese, you can go ahead and add a little bit of that Goya chicken bouillon packet, maybe half, and it would make it extra tasty. But I'm going to leave mine this way because I feel like I'm already adding too much. So, next, we're gonna start working with our big pan. So we're gonna light that flame to, I'm gonna say medium flame. Got that medium flame. And we're gonna sprinkle in a little bit of olive oil. And we're gonna use our forever favorite, Kerry Gold butter. I am obsessed with this butter. It's so tasty. And we're simply gonna cut about a tablespoon. Or maybe a little more if you like a little more butter like I do. There we go. Put that back there. And of course, you guys know I'm obsessed with garlic. So we're going to go ahead and add a tablespoon of garlic. Or as always, a little more. And here too, we're going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of onion powder, and I cannot get enough of this seasoning, the soul seasoning. Now this is all going to start cooking real quick. So, you know what, let's start by stirring everything in the big pan. This one is for our French beans. They have already been cooked, so all we're trying to do is flavor them lightly. So make sure everything is nicely mixed and coated. And then we're gonna go ahead with the same wooden spoon and we're gonna give the milk a nice good stir okay that's heating up really quickly and we have about 14 seconds left for it very carefully guys all right there goes our timer so let's quickly grab our french beans and just tear that bag open and toss those right into our big pan. These, I do like to make the whole bag and have leftovers because I eat these with so many other things. But we're gonna go ahead and stir them into our mixture of olive oil, garlic, butter, just make sure they're all coated very carefully. Now, if you don't want to touch them too much with both hands, go ahead and grab another tool and just keep flipping them, okay? Until we get everything nicely coated in that butter and salt and seasonings that we need. This is the only flavor we're adding to these, but guys, it's so tasty. It's one of our favorites. I do this with the asparagus as well. But these are kind of easier to handle, actually. There we go. I feel like they're all nicely coated. So we're gonna go ahead and toss them right over that flame. And we're gonna set a four minute timer, okay? Now our milk looks like it's starting to boil. So we're just gonna simply remove that from the heat and give it a good stir. There we go. And super, super easy. We're gonna lower that flame to a medium. And you can measure this out, but 
I have a pretty good feeling I got it down, but you can add a cup of cheddar cheese, okay? Or a little more. Mmm. Move that to the side. And just give that a good stir. The cheese is immediately going to start melting into the milk. Just keep stirring that. And we're going to place it right over our flame again. Now, don't forget to lower that flame to a low flame for the beans, the green beans, um, so that we don't burn them. We want them cooking, but not burning. We don't want to burn up that garlic either. And just keep giving that cheese a good stir. These are non-stick pans, so it's really going to work out. It won't burn on them. And it's thickening out beautifully. There you go, guys. And we're going to let those two minutes pass, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. Our timer is about to go off, so let's definitely shut off that flame for the cheese, okay? Let's pull that off and take a look at it. It's the easiest cheese sauce that I think I'll ever make. All right, just give it a good stir, okay? There we go. Place that right there. And for our green beans, now they've been sitting here for about those two minutes, so we are going to place a lid. Give it a good stir first, and then place a lid on them. And make sure that that flame is now maybe somewhere between a low to medium flame. And we are going to set up our timer yet again, uh, but this time for another three minutes, okay? Ooh. This sauce is super hot. We're just gonna leave it right here to the side. But we have our trusty mini Pyrex dish that we're gonna be using. Make sure you get the water out of all those potatoes. Put that to the side to make a little more room. And I like placing a nice towel there so it absorbs, okay? Now the potatoes should not be too hot and they should not be too cooked. So we are simply going to pour in a little bit of that cheese just at the bottom. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious, guys. Again, no gloves today because it's just for myself and my hubby. So we're going to start to layer the potatoes and I'll show you the first layer what we're trying to do is cover that cheese but with single layers okay we don't want to overpack those potatoes because we want everything to cook evenly and also be evenly flavored so go ahead and make three rows or as many rows as you can and once again we're just gonna go ahead and sprinkle in a little bit of that cheese sauce Mmm, I'm obsessed with this. And then a little bit of paprika. And we're gonna keep repeating this step, okay? For the next couple of minutes until we're done layering. Again, remember it's the cheese sauce, the potatoes in a single layer and a sprinkle of paprika. You wanna toss in some salt? Go ahead. I feel like mine is salty enough. We'll be back for that. All right, guys, I've now layered all my potatoes. And if you have a couple extra at the end, just pile them on. It's fine. We don't want to waste them. But look at how nice that looks. Super cheesy. I love the paprika. Now, I do have a little bit of chopped cilantro. You guys know I'm obsessed with it. So I am going to just sprinkle it right on top. And not all of it. And if you do want an extra layer of cheesiness that just kind of like bakes in the oven nicely, just lightly sprinkle that cheddar. Because remember, we already have that sauce. But we want it to look and taste super tasty. So just make sure you sprinkle that all around, even in the corners. And look at this beauty. We're going to put this to the side for now. And let's take a look at our green beans, okay? They've now obviously been cooking maybe for an extra two minutes. But with some tongues, maybe it's easier. We're just going to kind of rotate them. Oh, I love that. Let me show you guys. They're beautiful. And if you see the pan, 
that garlic is cooking nicely but not burning. Just give them a good stir. Now, the green beans are your preference. Uh, do you like the crunch in them? Do you like them super soft? You get to choose. For us, I like them super soft. I prefer a crunch in the asparagus. So just stir them up, stir them up. Remember we have a low to medium flame, but more low than anything. All right. And we're just gonna place that lid back on. We can keep babysitting this, it's gonna be just fine. But if you need to put a timer on, I would put another four minutes for me because I want them soft. If you like a crunch, I would put on maybe another minute and pull them off. But up next, we're gonna be introducing this to the oven, our potatoes. All right, guys, now, here are potatoes. They only sat for a tiny bit, and we are going to cover them with a little bit of boiling wrap. But we might, we wanna make this tight as always so that the cheese doesn't stick, okay? So curl that in really tight on one side, flip it over, pull on it so that it's nice and tight, and start curling it. There you go, I don't feel like mine is sticking. But nevertheless, we're gonna go ahead and go into our oven. Be very careful, I'm sorry to give you my back. And we're just gonna center it on the rack and we have two minutes left on the green bean timer, but we're just gonna go ahead and set up the timer for our potatoes. And that, my friends, is gonna be about 15 minutes. We have to take a look at them. If you're curious, you can take a look at them maybe 10 minutes in, all right? Now, I wanna take a look at my green beans again in case I find that these are done. It always depends with uh, green beans or French beans and the thickness. And since I've never made them microwaved in that bag, I definitely want to double check them. Okay, so we're going to pull one out. We're going to put that to the side. Let's introduce this right back over our stove top. And as always, guys, everything is super hot, so be careful. Just blow on it. They still have a crunch. So let's think. Hmm. Really tasty though. You know what? In order to build some moisture, I'm gonna place about a fourth of a cup in here and quickly, quickly place that lid right back on. There you go. We're gonna raise that flame low to medium and we're just gonna keep an eye out on our green beans. At this point, if I want them super like soft for me, I'm gonna say I need to give it about another four minutes while the steam and that water builds up and cooks them internally. All right, guys, but aside from that, we do have 13 minutes left for our potatoes, but we'll be back to start working on our steaks. Up next. All right, guys, so our green beans, I'm gonna say are done. So let's shut that off. And I'm just gonna place them in a separate container so they can sit there until we're ready to eat them. So here's a clear little Pyrex container. Let's remove that lid very carefully. And I'm simply gonna transfer them over. Ah, oh, they're beautiful, I love the texture. When they bend a little more, I know that they're soft enough for us. That's a lot of green beans and the garlic never burned. So that's the trick, just slow cooking. There we go. All right. And I do love the garlic that's at the bottom with the oil and the butter. So I'm just gonna drizzle that right on top. There's all that flavor in there. All right, let's put that there. Place that lid. 
live. Oh, well, actually, no, we're going to be using this. So I'll show you guys what's up next. But look at those beauties. So we're just going to place that to the side. Now, we're working with the steaks next. So let's raise that flame, guys. And we want it to a medium to high flame, okay? Now, steak is very peculiar for people. You can, you know, eat it well done or rare. You know, it's two extremes. But for us, we usually prefer it like uh, medium rare. Now, I try and try, and sometimes I get it, and sometimes I don't. But because we got this brand, and it's a grass-fed finished steak, it's so tender and beautiful that, honestly, it tastes good, whether it's a uh, rare, medium rare, well done, medium. I mean, it's amazing. So... Let's go ahead and sprinkle in a little bit of olive oil. And, of course, a little more garlic. Now, I'm at the end of mine, so I'm just going to go ahead and shake it out. I want those garlic juices more than the garlic, really. And we're going to put our butter right here because we're going to go in with our butter next, okay? But... Check out these steaks. They're letting go of some blood, but they're perfect. Real quick, we're gonna go ahead with some soul seasoning. And I love to coat them. Onion powder. Paprika. And you guys will know that it's a lot of repeat seasonings, but I'm also, try to keep it easy for ourselves and you guys. A sprinkle of black pepper, a sprinkle of salt, and now what we're going to do next is just tap, tap, tap with one finger and make sure we're packing those seasonings right in there. And you can rub the excess seasoning on the sides. And here's a trick that my husband taught me that I'm obsessed with. A little sprinkle of honey. Wow, does it go a long way. So. We're just gonna sprinkle that on top. And you hear that pan? We need it to that temperature, okay? So, go ahead and stir in that oil with those garlic juices. And even the leftover garlic from the green beans. I do like to use a big pan because I want both of my steaks to have space and cook well. Double check that flame. Make sure it's a medium. Nice and hot. So we're simply gonna grab our steaks and place them face down where we seasoned. They have plenty of space right now. Let's grab some paper towels. Wipe our hands. Double check that flame is on medium. And we have one minute left for a timer on our potatoes. That means we're gonna check them out because it's been 15 minutes. But we are going to set up our timer for our steaks and that's going to be a four minute timer. We do not wanna let it go past this time. We have to flip them over and cook them evenly, okay? But let's go ahead and grab our trusty gloves and let's check out our potatoes. Let's see how they're looking. Mm. I always feel like I like them very well cooked. So we're gonna see if you wanna to toss them back in there. Very carefully, without tearing this um, foil too much, we're gonna unroll with our fingertips. Try not to touch the container, because obviously it's really hot. But look at how beautiful that looks so far. And it's starting to brown a little bit. So let's grab a fork and poke at the top potatoes. Let's see if it goes right through. Mmm, feels like it could use a little longer. Nice. Okay. So place that foil right back on the top. I like to babysit a lot of our date night food because I really want it to be such a tasty meal that we can really truly enjoy. So we're gonna go right ahead and make sure that we place this back into our oven. Side note, we have two minutes left so far on our timer for our steak. 
Let's place our potatoes back in that oven. They're cooking so deliciously, but I want them super soft. So I know that I'm gonna set up another timer and I'm gonna make sure that I have another 10 minutes in the oven. All right, guys, make sure you have maybe two or three timers you can work with. Your phone's always good for that. Um, just in case, because we're cooking a couple things at the same time. But those steaks are looking amazing. When the two minutes are up, we'll be back to double check, okay? Okay, guys, the time is up and we're gonna flip our steaks now, okay? But if you wanna season the other side, by all means, go ahead. I like to sprinkle a little bit of uh, soul seasoning because why not more flavor? And I get my butter ready. So let's flip those steaks. Oh, beautiful charring on them. And we're gonna go ahead and toss in a tablespoon of butter. But let's cut it in half so we can spread it through the pan better. Just toss that in there. And set up our timer again for another four minutes, tops. Spread that butter in there, guys. There you go, we want it all around that steak. Great temperature. And one of the reasons I love using this steak is because let's say I happen to overcook it. Get a phone call, something happens. Its texture is so delicious, it's so soft. It's just, it's, it, you can slice through it like butter, right? So, my backup plan is always my favorite, and I introduced you guys to this sauce before, the Steakhouse Old Fashioned Sauce, Peter Luger. If you sprinkle this on any steak, it's going to be really good, okay? So we're gonna just safely put that to the side because we might be using it. But regardless, everybody has a favorite sauce, so find yours. All right. Now we're gonna give this the three minutes it has left, or maybe about 2.5 minutes, and we'll be back to pull them off. Because remember, steaks continue to cook even after you pull them off the pan. All right, be back. All right, guys, our timer has now gone off, so let's make sure we have a nice plate in which the juices can run and not spill over. And we're just gonna go ahead and pick up our steaks and place them right there. Oh, they are beautiful. Put that there, shut off that flame, and I just put the lid back on so I don't have to hear that sound anymore. But here they are. And now what we're gonna do is give these about three to five minutes, okay? So that they continue to cook and then we can also check on our potatoes. Now, let's double check our timer for our potatoes. My phone is telling me that I have, oh, the same amount of time. Three minutes and 30 seconds left. So, we'll be right back. All right, guys, our timer just went off for our potatoes. So let's check them out. And as you can see, I have everything laid out. My steaks are still chilling and my green beans are right here. But let's go ahead, and I'm sorry to give you my back again, but we gotta pull this out and very carefully. And we're just gonna put it straight to right on that cutting board. All right, let's put this to the side. I'm excited, I love date night food and I love making it myself. Ooh, that's, mmm. That's just so tasty, my mouth is watering. So we're simply gonna go ahead and use a fork and poke. Oh, that's so nice, I don't wanna destroy it, but I'm gonna show you guys, because that definitely still needs to cool down. Let's pick it up, there we go. Check it out, guys. It's a beauty. Such an easy dish, too, to be honest. And it just sits here and we just pick from it. It's amazing. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for a while. Let's make sure we shut our oven off. And what I am gonna do, because we're not gonna serve this just yet, I am going to slice into the steak to show you guys 
how delicious it turned out. So which one? Um, let's see. Let's all remember we all have a preference. We do like ours bloody. I hope that's not weird, but let's go ahead. I slice right down the middle. Because I'm really trying to keep that texture. So I slice both of them down the middle. I don't want them to internally keep cooking anymore. Let me turn them so I can place them. Oh, right here. And that way you can see. All right, let me come around, guys. Look at that. That's perfect. That's rare to medium rare for us. And then look at this one. Because I always place one more on the flame than the other. But look at that one. That's so beautiful. Mmm. So, I will uh, take a picture of this and you will see it right up next, how I serve it and how we like to eat it. But for right now, I am going to cut a little sliver. Oh, like butter, guys. Really, this is such a good steak. The brand never fails. So I am still going to add some of the sauce because I apparently am the sauce queen and I just do love different flavors and different sauces. There's food I leave alone and I love the flavor of, but why not make it better with some extra sauce? So I'm going to just pour that right over. Oof. And you only need a little bit of this one. It goes a long way. Ugh, my favorite. I literally tasted this sauce when I was 15 and I became obsessed with it. And it tastes so good on potatoes too. But anyway, let's go ahead, pull that little piece over so I can keep that sauce in there. Let me come around and show you guys. The perfect steak bite. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. You guys, mm. melt in your mouth steak. Ah, so yummy. I gotta be honest, I used to really go for filet, but it's been quite hard to find it where it's a reasonable price. And we do love our steak grass fed and finished. So mm, I started to switch over to this one and it's amazing. Mm. So delicious, so amazing. So we're back at that point again, guys. Thank you so much. It's always sad to say goodbye, but thank you so much for joining us in another episode of Little Tika and Big Eats. I am happy to share something that I guess I find very basic because we make it so often, but I'm glad to share it with you guys and I hope that this can be your next date night. I know for a fact it's cheaper than going out, but anyways, thank you again. And we'll see you on the next episode, you guys. Mwah! Cheers. And make sure that every parent still remembers to have date night. Okay? Ciao.